Good morning, AO. Gabe here. Hope everyone's having a great Tuesday. And uh, month uh, three of mentor sessions. Hopefully, there's been some improvement in my performances. Uh, let's see, I got a, just a few questions this time. First question is from Rohit Gupta. Hope you I said that right. And they're asking, what is the best or most necessary apps needed for a Shopify store? Um, well, I do have online stores, uh, but I don't have any Shopify stores, to be honest. Shopify, Shopify is very popular. Um, I know a lot of people that use it. I currently use WooCommerce, um, primarily because the, the web developer that I work with is really good on WooCommerce, and WooCommerce is more of an open platform, so it allows us to do things more affordably sometimes than Shopify. Um, but it also has a lot of apps just like Shopify. And it really just depends on what you're trying to do. For example, you know, I have an app attached to my web online website that helps me calculate sales tax accordingly throughout my state. Because in the state of Florida, you have to claim, you have to charge sales tax depending on the county of the customer because each county has different tax rates. So there's an app for that. Um, for example, we do free shipping over a certain amount and there's an app that calculates when a customer gets free shipping. Um, there's an app that helps us sync our inventory between one store and another store that are on the same platform, but they're two different URLs and we share the inventory and we use an app to connect that. So really, um, I would need a little bit more background on what your website is, what you sell, what you do. And also I don't know what's available on Shopify exactly, but it would just essentially apps to make your site do more of what it's supposed to do more effectively and more automated. I um, hope that helps. Uh, if you send me a side message with more info, I could tell you what kind of apps I think would optimize your site, and then it would be on you to go see if those apps are available. Hope that helps. The next question that I have is from Martina. And Martina is asking, what sort of strategy do I have to achieve, do I have to do to achieve my target for this month to reach 2,500 points, last minute goal? She is an, an Herbalite in Herbalife marketing and personal training industry, all online. This month, her goal is to set to get a score of or beat a score of 2,500 points, which seems like a mission at the moment. I've been messaging people, adding people on social media, Facebook, IG, but not having much luck. I'm determined, but how else? I'm determined, but how else efficiently? So she's determined, but isn't sure, you know, how to efficiently attract people and sell her nutrition programs. Thank you for your help. So um, I'm trying to think about this. So selling online is a big challenge. I mean, you can make a lot of money and, but you have a lot of competition too. So you have to stand out. You're talking about getting a certain amount of points and I'm not sure how you get these points. I'm not sure if you're getting these points by making actual sales. If they correlate to dollar values, if they correlate to getting more customers in the pipeline, more, you know, expanding your network. Uh, I said that I see that you've been adding people on social media and messaging people. I'm not sure if that gets you points and you're doing that, hoping to land a sale that will then get you points. But essentially, in my opinion, this is, you know, my personal opinion, I don't sell programs. I sell retail products only in my businesses. But if you're selling a nutrition program, for me to want to buy a program from somebody, I need to trust them that like they need to be a proof of concept, in my opinion. So make sure that you, in social media and anywhere that you, you know, people can find you. And if you have a website, you know, an online profile anywhere, it all highlights you being a proof of concept to whatever program you're pushing. So if you have some nutrition program that helps you be more fit, helps you be healthy, helps you lose weight, helps you be less stressed out, it helps you with whatever it's supposed to help you with, you need to almost be like the, this, you're the salesperson. So on top of just selling it by trying to convince people that they should get the nutrition program, when they look at you online, your post, your lifestyle, your image should resemble this and be almost like a proof that this concept works great. And if you wanna look like me or be like me or act like me or sound like me or feel like me, get my nutrition program. That would be the strongest avenue that I can think of. Um, and then obviously just ex expanding your network. Um, there's also, you can also buy leads. A lot of people are in, against that. Some people are pro buying leads, but you can totally 
also buy leads out there if you know exactly what type of lead you're looking for. And then you can partner with other people on social media that have a much bigger um, network than you and potentially you know, collaborate on things. Something that just comes to mind right now is maybe your nutrition programs, maybe you can give one away. You can give one program away to one individual and you can team up with an Instagram page and uh, look at this. So collaborate where you guys can both give away this giveaway together. It's your program that you're giving away, but the other collab, the other person you're collaborating with gets to, you know, gain followers through you. You get to gain followers through them. You get to collaborate and then you can grow your network that way. Yes, you'll have to give something away or maybe find another avenue Maybe you pay this person to be able to, to do that with you. But that would be another another alternative. As long as when people look at you, you're that proof of concept. If they look at your page and they're not sold that you know, you're living by whatever you're pushing, then it's gonna be harder, in my opinion. I hope that helps. Again, message me on the side if you want. Um, thanks for the comment, Sean. Got a new haircut, shortest I've had in a long time. Um, but yeah, message me on the side if you have any more questions. I don't sell programs, but I do sell wellness products online. I can be happy to chat with you farther. So Matthew here is asking, how do you approach a business partner when your new responsibilities have become more than the original agreement for a percentage in the company? Oh man. Okay. So this, uh, I, I hate these kind of things, but they always happen. Unfortunately, I've been through them myself, personal experience. I know dozens of people that run into this kind of stuff and it always happens because obviously when things are great, nobody worries about the exits and how to fix it when things aren't great. So I'm going to assume that you're, contracts or your paperwork or your agreements don't really say what to do when this happens. And that's why you don't know what to do. So first step is don't let that happen again to you. In the future, everything is written super clear. So that if you know, if your job is supposed to be something specific, then that needs to be clearly written so that it's not you don't have to bring it up when you're doing something different. It's already been brought up because everybody knows what you're supposed to be doing. Um, but anyway, so you can, that's nothing to fix this. But going forward, I myself have learned that the hard way too. And you know, when I get into any kind of business or partnership, it is extra, extra clear now, everything about it from getting into it to how to exit it as well um, and everything in between. But to start you know, for your situation, you, you, have, you have to have this conversation. Absolutely, I do not think it's the best to be happy with your percentage and do everything I can to make this business success, which is what you asked. So in your background, you mentioned, you know. How do I approach my custom, my partner to talk about this? Or do I just stay happy with what I got? Do, I don't think stay happy with what you got because you're doing a lot more than you said you were going to do. You agreed to doing. And if, you know, if 12% was supposed to get you um, whatever, uh, let me see what we're supposed to do originally. So you're supposed to do the product development only. So 12% is supposed to be for product development. And now you're doing but it sounds like website and graphic design and sales portals and customer support. And that's, that's not 12%, 12%. Either you need to get a salary for what your new job is. Cause if not, you would be hiring somebody. So keep that in mind too. It doesn't matter if the partners are doing something, the owners are doing something, a shareholder or a random guy off the side of the street. All you're really doing is fulfilling job titles that need to happen for this company to run. This company needs a customer support and needs sales portals. It needs graphic design. If you're not doing it, somebody's going to have to do it. And that person is going to want to get paid. So you should get paid too. That would justify more you keeping your 12% if you were just being hired on the side to fulfill these other roles. If you're not taking any kind of salary for these extra positions that you're doing, then I, I don't think things sound fair. And you would definitely need to have a conversation. And my feedback for the conversation, you know, prepare, 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 prepare. Put yourself in the other person's shoes. Think about everything they might have to say to you about it. Why they might not be happy with your approach what they might come back and argue against, all those things and prepare for them, have answers, have responses, already all prepared. So that whenever this conversation happens, you're comfortable, you're confident, you're not nervous, and you, you have an answer for any possible argument or question that might come your way. Lay it all out, make it obvious that, you know, what you're asking is logical, it's fair, it's easy, it's not, you know, um, selfish. And then a lot of times if you play, lay it all out properly and show them that it really is, you know, a fair, I know it's, it's something like what you're asking is very fair and, and logical. And, you know, if you have a, an understanding partner, it shouldn't be a big deal. 
Um, but I would not let any at least amount of time possible go by because if your company grows, the bigger your company grows, the more of a problem this will be when you do have it. It's easier to talk about shareholders and percentages of companies that are worth ten dollars than talking about the same thing when a company is worth a million dollars. And same when if it's worth a million and then it's worth ten million. So it's, if it's a new company, it's a startup, you know, iron everything out now. You know, if you don't have operating agreements, make some. If you don't have shareholder agreements, if you don't have bylaws, all that stuff, write all that stuff up. Make sure that you you have everything to protect you, and take this as a as a as a like a learning or as a warning. Like thank God this came up, so that now you're fixing everything, so that when something more serious happens down the road, you have things to protect everybody. So that would be my biggest advice there. Question me on the side if you want to send me a DM or anything. You're more than welcome. I'd be happy to um, discuss farther. Um, I had a percentage in a company a long time ago, and I got kind of cheated out of it, in my opinion, but I didn't have any documents to support me. And that was a massive learning curve for me. And I would hate to see that to happen to anyone else. Uh, okay, next question is from Shelly. Hey, Shelly. Uh, Shelly is asking, what is your recommendation for handling the stress created from an employee mistake you have to go back and fix? Oh, my gosh. Story of my life. Uh, oh man, if I, this is, this happens all the time and it's never going to end. So I'm glad that you're work, you're working on how to deal with the stress because it's going to keep happening. So it's good to learn how to deal with it. Um, let's see. The background is she's in a fire protection contractor and she just found out that an employee who's no longer with her made a mistake on the sales tag rates for a particular city. Obviously she can't write the person up or have a conversation with them. And she's super stressed out. So she wants to scream right now. How do you handle this sort of stress? So the, what I always do to kind of bring me back at least to, to a more normal level, the first thing is just think about how lucky you are to be dealing with this problem and not be the person on the other end that is the employee that, that caused the problem. It's so much better to be the business owner dealing with the problem, even if it's the, a massive problem, than being the employee that created it. Because the employee can get fired, has no control over their income, depends on their employer completely for everything to pay their bills to survive you as the employer you can have whoever you want on your team you can pay yourself whatever you want to pay yourself you can do whatever you want with your business you can fire and hire i see please so dealing with these mistakes that people make is such a blessing compared to having to deal with begging an employer not to let you go because you made a mistake or getting let go because you made a mistake you, Shelly, can make all the mistakes you want. No one's firing you, right? So I always think about that in that position that you have versus what the position your employee has and how fortunate you are to even have this problem to stress out over. You know, if you didn't have this fire protection business and you didn't have a bunch of employees, there wouldn't be anybody to make mistakes. There wouldn't be anything to stress you out, but you also wouldn't be in the position you are today. I wouldn't have the financial freedom you have today all the networking you have today, all the awesome things you're doing for California. I know you're, you know, you're well more involved than just in your business. And all those things come from the, the opportunities that your business have provided for you. So this getting stressed out over this, psh, who cares? Like, look at where you, what you have. Who, who, like such a small little thing. How, how lucky are you to have this problem? To be able to, you know, have to, to stress out over an employee that messed up sales tax rates. The fact that you're paying sales taxes, you're selling stuff. You know, that employee of yours are just collecting a paycheck. Um, so that's the first thing for me. I just kind of bring myself back to like step back, look at the big picture, see where you are, see where they are. Like, why are you even stressed out? Like, this is a good problem. You know, you, the fact that you have these problems, that you're in a much better position than most individuals out there. You're in the top 1% probably. Um, so think of it like that. And, and then that really diminishes like the stress, you know, it's, it's just another hiccup that you have to go through to have the fortunate life that you have and the, the great life that you have. And they're super small prices to pay. Um, so, you know, try not to, that, that helps me relieve stress. Uh, aside from that, just practices, you know, meditation. If you know how to meditate, psh, I wish I knew. Um, you know, just relaxing, taking some time off. Even if it's five minutes to step outside, get some fresh air, you know, step away from, from the office, you know, take care of your mental health. Absolutely. But with all that, just also think about the big picture. Remind yourself that you're lucky to even be having these problems. You know, it's no, no sense in, in feeling like you have to scream right now. You almost think, you know, thank God that I can deal with this and I'm not 
any of the other people that I'm dealing with, they're all on the other end of the side of the table. They're all relying on me to keep them, let them go, you know, discipline them, train them. They all rely on me and you, you don't rely on any of them. You know, you have your own engine taking care of you. So the least you can do is take care of that engine when it needs a little oil and be thankful that you can do that. So it's my feedback. Hope that helped Shelly. Um, I deal with stuff like that all the time, you know, just really quickly on just to relate with you. I have an online store that sells a lot in the state of Florida and sales tax in Florida is per county. It's really complicated. Might be that way in, in Cali too, but point is my web developer messed up all the tax, the tax rates for our website um, for the state of Florida. And this was a couple of years ago, but then we got a, an audit, you know, a random sales tax audit. They say random, you know, probably because our numbers didn't match up. And then I found out that I was, I shorted the state like 30 grand over a year on sales tax. Um, you know, and I was so frustrated with my web developer and I was so upset with everybody that, you know, didn't catch this happening. But at the end of the day, you know, this website that, that cost me 30 grand in, in taxes and this web developer that I got super pissed at, you know, they, they helped me set up, they got me to where I got today. Like if they hadn't helped me do that and I hadn't built that website, even with the problems I had and the taxes that I didn't pay, I wouldn't have the website I have today and the customers I have today and where I'm at now. So it sucked. I was frustrated spent a bunch of money, took a huge hit with that. But at the end, I, I was lucky to have that problem. You know, the alternative would be I didn't had a didn't have a website and then never had a sales tax problem. And I wouldn't have made all the money I made on that website, even though I had to pay stuff out. Um, so with the negative, you know, I there's a, usually a bunch of positive too, and we just get held up on the negative. So anyway, hope that helps. Hope everyone's having a great Tuesday. Um, that's all my questions for today. Um, let me know if anyone has any feedback and I'll see you next month. Thank you guys.